to go. I was trying to follow AAA and capture the links. My connection would drop and I would lose all the comments. Uh, Johnny, I'm sorry we don't have anybody doing show notes for that. And, oh, it looks like my camera froze up too, by the way. Um, yeah, the, uh, that's, a, that's a great suggestion. So we build another capture device, plug it into a port on the router, and it saves all chat and links in an HTML type document that I could open the next day and follow. The device, device would be mostly like just a Raspberry Pi attached to the router with an SD card or USB flash drive, which I could open the file later and just click on the links and get the information. If we could build one that could capture the new posting in various forms or IRC chat rooms, I would give a total of $250. It is very likely there is an app or add-on to browsers that browsers that perform the test, but that would require my computer to be on all the time. My main problem is that I work an awful lot. I'm never home. And when the podcasts are live or my connection goes flaky, if you know of anyone who could write scripts for such a task and then work for me, I would pay them if the program would work. If you know of any way to get this output without using Raspberry Pi, I would be open to suggestions. I could have a server running all the time in another room. I have a couple of older computers, P4s, two gig of RAM that could put that I could put PF Sense or something on it and have it capture the output. I guess we could do that, but it would not involve Raspberry Pi, but the power consumption would probably be three or four times what the Pi would require. What do you think, Door? Yeah, he's exactly right. Well, this has been my third proposal. My final proposal will be out, sent out Friday. It will be $700. Mm -hmm. I have also decided to give Door two other suggestions. <laughs> One of his proposals just made me sick to my stomach, and he definitely oh. does need better ideas. I guess it might have been the bait. Did you want do one about bacon? I guess, I guess I will have to explain that one later. Thank you so much and have a nice day, Johnny. I I'm, I will bit I had to think about this at first, but there is no doubt in my mind this one's doable. Um all you would need is like a little text-based IRC client like IRSSI, a RISI, or something like that. Here's the real gimmick. You would be let's say Johnny and then you would have that device log into the Justin chat, which is IRC, as like Johnny Bot. And that would be your bot account. And you Johnny could, Pie. Johnny Pie. Johnny Pie Bot. Okay. Pie, something. And then you could literally schedule it to say, okay, Android App Addicts, Thursday night at um, 8.58, log in to Justin.tv, pound sign, pod nuts, and then at 10.30 10 or whatever, disconnect. And during that whole connection time, capture all the HTTP, bam. You know what I mean? Everything that starts with HTTP or www. There's no, there's no doubt in my mind you can do that and have it automatically scheduled to only join certain servers in certain rooms at certain times. Yeah, it sounds doable. I like it. Thanks, Johnny. Next one. All right, this is Johnny's fourth proposal, guys, and then we'll get to the other the other guys. Fourth proposal for the Raspberry Pi, Pi project, the big one. I want to use Raspberry Pi as wireless bridges, if possible, to link wireless cameras from my church about a quarter mile to my house. Such a set setup would allow me to monitor our cemetery buildings and parking lot with motion detection and possible SMS alerts whenever an alarm is triggered. I have permission to install relays on people's fence posts and on and on one barn roof so I can daisy chain them with line of sight. If I use one at the church, one at my house on the roof with three in between, as I stated earlier, I would give $700 for the software scheme and instructions. The three intermediate or in-between units would have to be powered by batteries. I've thought about trying to use XBs and Arduinos for this project, but I don't know if they will have enough range. I bought some XBs. I don't even know what they are but just haven't gotten to work on it yet. Our church does not have phone or cable connected. We have a small church with nothing worth stealing. We are just a target for vandals and mischievous youngsters. What's an XB door? Oh, uh, XB looks like a, looks like a add on to our, to our Arduino. It's like XB shield. Okay. Uh, it, it, I, I think it's a piece of hardware. Okay. I'll look it up later. Uh, he says, I would also like to use the same setup to hook up cameras to some storage buildings if, for the owners if such an arrangement would work. In such a scenario, I would only have electricity in one building and would have to rely on batteries to power the cameras and bridges if such an arrangement would work. In that case, 
the images would just flow to the to a DVR and be recorded. If there is no internet or dial-up service available, unless we use Verizon Wireless, and such streaming would be costly. Such a setup would also work really well for thousands of people in the U.S. that live next door to their aging parents. No live internet connection would be required, just a wireless bridge and wireless camera. Not for the purpose of snooping, but rather peace of mind for those of us who want our parents to be protected and not smothered by our care. Well, Dor and Steve C., you asked for suggestions. I have put my thinking cap on and given you four. I have two more that I will try to get to, to you. Both of them will just blow away Dor's lame proposal for an automatic kitchen drawer closers, but I don't want to hurt his feelings. He might not consider my proposal seriously. I don't get to listen or participate live to the podcast, but I will really try to hear you on the next Linux for the rest of us. Please post in G+, when it's going live, and I'll try to drop in. Respectfully, Johnny. Is he in the chat? John? I'm not positive. I posted it. Um, I've been so busy looking this stuff up. This is cool. He, can, I like the kitchen drawer closer, man. I, I know, but he can dump on it. Yeah, that that that's his right. All right, all right. I'm good, man. Okay, real quick. It looks like the XB Shield is a Arduino like snap-in plugin that allows it to use wireless communications. I'm not sure what kind it is. Um, I can tell you right now, there is no doubt in my mind, this is absolutely plausible and doable because in Linux, just like in Windows, you can do internet connection sharing. Is there going to be enough range if you put three or four of these along the way? Well, that's going to be the real wild card question. Um, there's no reason why you cannot have a network signal come in the wireless and out the Ethernet or vice versa. But here's the thing. It has to be wireless on both ends, I believe. I don't think you can have a, that one device with one wireless antenna doing... Uh, doing I don't think Receiving so. and transmitting. Yeah, I'm not positive, but I don't think you can do that. So you might have to buy two for each fence, for each, for each fence post. Wow. But with that, it's basically infinite range you could get off of it. As long as you can afford the Raspberry Pis for in for in for in for in be in between, yeah. Um, I, I honestly that one would take a little bit of research. Definitely doable. I'm not sure price comparison Arduino would be better. Because really, all you need is a re is a re re uh, peer. Arduino's not running Linux. It's running um not even x86 um. Risk processing, old school language. There's not a lot of. There's a lot of stuff you cannot do on it. So honestly, I don't. I don't know if the Arduino could even do it. Okay. Um, I like the idea of it though. It is a cool idea. Yeah, and there's no reason why you couldn't have a little solar panel and a little re. Um, oh yeah. Chargeable battery right there too. Good call. Hey, thank you, Johnny, for the suggestions. We'll see which one. Uh door pick set of and we got some more to read here gordon says you asked for ideas don't know if it would work but it sounds fun to me at least hook up a sound receiving device and a small electroshock device program the device that on detection of snoring sounds it sends a small jolt to the electroshock device that is hidden under your favorite loved one's bed sheet should cure or reduce the amount of snoring allowing you to get a good night's rest Anyways, like the shows. Wish I could join them live more often. It's from Gordon. That is cool, man. I yeah, but... <laughs> I don't have a, I don't have a electric shock, but some type of thing to disturb a snoring person. Well, the problem is I wouldn't s slide it under my loved one's bed sheet. It would be under my bed sheet. Because <laughs> I'm the loud one. Um... I don't think there's any reason why you couldn't do this. Basically, you just take a sound sample of what it's like, and then you just say when sound is like sound. Zzz. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. That's definitely doable. Yeah, but you got to be really careful because sweating might make the shock worse. So, yeah. <laughs> it's like a, how about a taser? All right. Exactly. Sh <laughs> Shannon says, Hi, Door Hope. I'm not too late for the Raspberry Pi contest. I was going to do this last week, but I got sidetracked. But when I heard on Linux for the rest of us that no one had submitted any ideas, I decided to make an effort because I would really like a shot at those great Linux videos of yours. 
I plan on using the Raspberry Pi as another tool in my PC repair business. It is a Linux computer, cheap and very portable. I would install custom Lubuntu Destro with the only programs I need for troubleshooting PC problems. There are many uses. One, there's a VGA adapter available so I could test monitors quickly. Two, I could use it with a USB to SATA cable and test hard drives, disk check, virus, or data recovery. Three, I could test USB equipment, keyboards, mouse, etc. I always seem to be waiting on one test to complete so I could work on another laptop or PC. With the Raspberry Pi, I could have multiple computers running basic tasks all the time at the same time without breaking the bank. This is just an idea, not a really cool hack like the automated <laughs> the automated kitchen drawers. <laughs> Thanks, Dor, for all you do. I like the kitchen drawers. So do I, dude. <laughs> That's not <laughs> wasn't you, very popular, was it? Apparently not, no. I will say this is uh, Shannon from Google Plus. He hooked me up last week oh, with a link. I this never crossed my mind. I'm not going to lie. Never, ever crossed my mind. But can you imagine, Steve, having a shop where your bench computers are Raspberry Pis? Are Raspberry Pis. Yes. A, I know. That's the picture I got when he was saying this. It's a great idea. Very good. Um, I would ask uh, Shannon, email Tracy at the Techie Geek or, and Russ at the Techie Geek and shoot them that idea. Um. Something tells me you'll make it at least one of them giddy. <laughs> I know. I'm out of the business, and I even got giddy. Yeah, I was like, oh, man. Damn. Right. Genius. Yeah. All right, next one's from Carlos. Hello, guys. I, like you, am interested in the Raspberry Pi. I have some ideas of what to do with it, but searching around, I found this channel on YouTube. This guy is basically preparing viewers on how to install Linux, use Linux, get packages, install them, etc. on the Raspberry Pi computer when they get it. He starts by using a virtual machine since he doesn't have a Raspberry Pi yet. There are many ideas on YouTube about what to do with the computer, but I like this channel because A, he goes step by step with clear explanations, and B, he's promoting Linux. Here's the link. It's uh, YouTube.com. The channel is called Raspberry Pi Tutorials. Raspberry Pi Tutorials. I have not seen any of these yet, but um, they look cool. We got 13 Raspberry Pi. You know what? I hate on YouTube where yeah, they, say it. They, you know what I mean? They show that they don't show the titles, but they can't. They don't expand it out. I know they cut them off. They cut them off. That's super lame. Yeah, uh, agreed. It's stupid. So lame. Uh, anyway, there looks like a. Uh, Nothing against this channel. It's against YouTube. But uh, check out Raspberry Pi Tutorials. This might give you guys some ideas. Got uh, He's got about 13 videos up, and it looks like some pretty cool stuff. I just can't read the titles. Yeah. Um, real quick, I'll say at least half of them are using Python. We mentioned Python on the show. It is one of the easiest, simplest programming languages to learn the basics of and to become e efficient in because... There's so many people out there telling you the basics and giving you code. Um, that this is cool. I I can't lie, Carlos. I had no idea this existed. The site? I, well, that they had a whole channel devoted to it. <laughs> no, me neither. Thank you, Carlos. We definitely got to check that out. All right, another one. Johnny's back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Steve M and Steve C. I have to reprioritize my suggestions again. I have listened to Steve M's suggestion about the clothes dryer and figured if he can make such a system work, why not use the same solution to solve the number one home insurance claim? Fl what is it? Flooding? He gave a link. Yeah. Let's see. The link says water-related insurance claims, top five. Okay, flooding. Looks like flooding. Um, he goes on to say, Johnny does. Why not have a simple moisture sensor located in our utility rooms or basements on the floor beside our clothes washer and another one in the overflow plans that most of our hot water heaters are sitting in? In the over pans, the overflow pans that most of our hot water heaters are sitting in. When the water level hit a certain level or even cause water to cover two contacts at the same time. An IM or text or email is sent to our cell phones and possibly even an audible alarm sounds. If we were at a ball game, concert, church, or just goofing off, we would instantly be notified and we would get the problem under control or at least stop any further damage by just turning off the water. Even if we were on vacation, we could call a trusty neighbor or family member to go shut off the water. And if they could get into the house, throw on the breakers, throw the breakers on an electric water heater and shut off the gas on a gas hot water heater. 
This past summer, the wife and I went to a wedding in East Tennessee, and when we got home three days later, we found the utility room one inch deep uh-huh. in water because a 12-year-old gas hot water heater had rusted through, and there was water everywhere, uh-huh. L- or, i.e., unhappy wife, unhappy life. Fortunately, our utility room is two inches below the house floor level, and no carpet was ruined or floor timbers ruined, but an early moisture alarm with but with an early moisture alarm we would have come home immediately and when, and life would have been better thank you for your suggestion uh, our consideration of my various proposals sincerely johnny ps sure hope i win the videos <laughs>